How thickness is one of those key factors when it comes to choosing a Persian or Oriental rug that I think is often overlooked. In my opinion, if you have a better and deeper understanding of pile thickness and what are the different options you have when it comes to pile thickness and how it affects your rug, you're going to end up making the entire purchasing process much easier for yourself and you're going to end up with a rug that just feels right. Hi, I'm Sean with Catalina Rug and in this video, we're going to be going over everything you need to know about pile thickness of Persian and Oriental rugs. And we're going to cover several topics in this video, so let's do a quick overview. So first, we're going to be talking about the different categories of pile thickness, so low, medium, high, and also how we measure pile thickness. Then we'll go over how the pile is actually created in the weaving process and what is it that determines the thickness of the pile. Then we'll go over some of the factors that you need to consider when choosing pile thickness and some of the recommendations we have in terms of which pile thicknesses work better in different areas of your home. And then finally, make sure you stick around to the end because we have different recommendations for you for Persian and Oriental rugs for each category of pile thickness. So stick around and all that is coming up now. All right, so first let's go over how do we measure the pile thickness of the rug and what are the different categories of pile thickness that we use here at Catalina Rug. So first of all, in order to measure the pile thickness, basically what we're doing is we're looking at the distance from the back of the rug to the edge of the pile, to the top of the pile of the rug. And there's a couple easy ways to do this. One way is just to lay the rug flat, put a ruler on the ground and just measure from the floor all the way to the top of the pile. Another way is to use a caliper tool. This is what we use at Catalina Rug. And we basically grab from the bottom of the, uh, of the rug to the top of the pile and look at the measurement there using the caliper tool. So as you can see, measuring the pile thickness of the rug is pretty straightforward. So now let's take a look at the different categories of pile thicknesses that you will encounter. So here at Catalina Rug, we break down our pile thicknesses into four different categories. Uh, the first one would be a high pile rug. It's gonna be between half an inch to five eighth of an inch. Then we have medium pile rugs, which are between a third of an inch to three eighth of an inch. And then we have a low medium pile rugs, which are a quarter of an inch to one third of an inch. And then we have a low pile rugs, which are an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. So those are the four categories of pile thickness that you're gonna find in the rugs in our inventory. So in order for us to have a real understanding of pile thicknesses, I think it's also important to understand a bit more about how the pile is actually created. So let's talk about that real briefly. So Persian and Oriental rugs are made, made with two major components. One of them is the foundation of the rug and the other is the actual pile of the rug. So for the foundation part, let's just say that the foundation is set up on the loom by the weavers and then they start knotting the pile of the rug into the foundation. Now, as they're working themselves through the foundation, they're tying the, uh, the knots of the rug, creating the pile knot by knot. Every few inches that they create these knots, they're gonna stop and they're gonna trim uh, the pile so that way they can see clearly what the pattern looks like that they're doing everything accurately. They're not gonna trim it all the way down, but just enough so they could clearly see how it's going. But really, the actual final process of the rug, once the pile is completely made, when the rug is complete and it's taking off, taken off the loom, it goes through the finishing process. That's where the actual rug is trimmed, where the final thickness of the pile is determined during that trimming process. So now you might be wondering, how do they determine how much of the rug's pile they're going to actually trim during this final process? Well, this really depends on several different factors. For example, the knot density of the rug, the actual design and the patterns in the rug, the style of the rug. And uh, for example, one of the things that will impact it is if the rug has really high knot density and the design is supposed to look very sharp and you're supposed to be able to see the patterns very clearly because of this high knot density, or let's say higher resolution, then in that case, they tend to trim the rug uh, lower, the pile of the rug lower, so that way you could clearly see this, this high resolution design. And it would be the opposite if you have a much lower knot density where the patterns are gonna be larger, the design is gonna be larger pieces, then in that case, because of this lower knot density, lower resolution, 
there is not as much need to make it so sharp so they leave it with a higher pile so there's a lot of different factors that go into it but that's just one example so now that we have the background about how pile thickness is created in the rug let's talk about some of the things that you can consider when it comes to choosing different pile thicknesses so i think the first thing is just about aesthetics and your personal preference so some people really like to have a rug that has a high pile that feels more cushiony to walk on and just has a more cozy feel to it. Also, maybe um, you prefer to have something that has larger boulder patterns and that usually comes with a higher pile rug. On the other hand, some people like to have a lower pile rug because it feels smoother to walk on or perhaps you like to have something that has really high knot density and has a really clear sharp design. And so you're generally gonna end up with a lower to medium pile rug because that is just part of having something that has really high knot density and sharper design. So this is all about your personal preference and dep depends on the experiences that you've had with other rugs and what you like to uh, feel underneath your feet as you're walking on top of the rug. So I think another important factor that you can consider when it comes to choosing different pile thicknesses is going to be your actual usage of the rug and where you're planning to use it. So for example, if you're planning to use the rug in a really busy area of your home, so for example, a busy living room or busy hallway or busy entryway, then in that case, I would recommend going with something that's going to be more of a medium to higher pile to be able to withstand that type of traffic. Also, another thing to consider is going to be really heavy furniture. So if you're going to be using the rug in your bedroom or let's say in the dining room and you're expecting to have a really heavy bed or really heavy dining table on top of the rug, then in that case, again, I would recommend go with something medium to higher pile to be able to withstand the weight of those heavy pieces of furniture. Now, on the other hand, if let's say you're planning to use the rug somewhere where you need good door clearances, sometimes this happens in hallways if you have doors opening over the rug or other areas of your home. In that case, a lower pile rug would be better. And also, generally speaking, a lower pile rug does better in bathrooms or areas where you have high humidity because it doesn't have the really thick pile that will absorb the humidity into the pile. So generally that's where you wanna go with a lower pile rug. So another factor to consider when it comes to choosing the different pile thickness of a rug is going to be rug care. And generally speaking, the lower the pile, generally the easier is going to be to maintain. Because of the lower pile, first of all, it's gonna trap less dust and dirt in the pile. Also, it's gonna be a little bit easier to vacuum because it has a shorter pile. And uh, as mentioned, when it comes to higher humidity areas, the lower pile rug tends to do better because they absorb less of that humidity. There's less pile for it to absorb humidity into. But when it comes to actual rug cleaning, let's say you wanna take your rug to a professional rug cleaner, uh, the cost of it is going to be the same for all the different uh, pile thicknesses because the way that they charge for that is always going to be uh, square footage. At least for a majority of uh, rug cleaners, they charge per square feet when they charge for rug cleaning. If you're enjoying this video, then I invite you to like and subscribe and turn on your notification bell because we put out videos just like this every week covering everything you need to know about Persian and Oriental rugs. Now next, let's go over the different types of Persian and Oriental rugs that we recommend in each of these pile thickness categories. So when it comes to the different types of Persian or Oriental rugs, each type has its own distinct characteristics. And one of those characteristics is the pile thickness. Now this is not the case 100% of the time. So for example, for types of rugs like a Tabriz Persian rug, in that case, there's a lot more variation with that type. You could find low pile rugs, medium and high, but we're going to try to help you by giving you different recommendations we have for each category and what types of Persian oriental rugs you're going to find in each of these pile thickness categories. So these are the types of Persian rugs that you're going to find in the high pile thickness category. So you'll find a lot of Hariz rugs have a higher pile as well as rugs from Mashhad and rugs from Saru, Bijar, Azerbaijan, Hamedan, Zanjan, as well as Gape rugs. So those are the types of rugs that are gonna usually have a higher pile. So here's the types of Persian and oriental rugs that you're gonna usually find in the medium pile thickness category. 
So you'll find a lot of rugs from Tabriz that have the medium pile, as well as Kashan and Esfahan, Karaje, as well as Malayer, Torkaman, and Nai. And when it comes to the oriental rugs, you'll find that rugs from Bukhara as well as Khal Mohammadi have a more of a medium pile thickness. So if you're looking for a Persian rug with a lower pile, you could take a look at Silk Tabriz rugs or pretty much any 100% Silk Persian rug because they are going to have that higher knot density which requires them to have a lower pile to show off the design of the pattern of the rug. And then also certain antique Persian rugs are going to have a lower pile depending on their age. The pile is going to get lower over time. And then finally, when it comes to oriental rugs, you could take a look at Ushak rugs as well as Kazakh rugs. Most of these rugs have a lower pile because they have been antique washed and created to look antique and that requires them to have a lower pile. So this concludes our video on pile thickness when it comes to Persian and oriental rugs. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and hopefully now you have a deeper understanding of pile thickness. I invite you to check out our site catalinarug.com. You can look at any collection there and you're able to filter the results based off of the pile thickness. Also we have the values of pile thickness available for every rug in our inventory. Also, I invite you to watch our playlist on YouTube about the different types of Persian and Oriental rugs so that way you can get familiar about the distinct characteristics of each kind. And don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below and I'll see you in the next video.